They're already being called the Benghazi transcripts, the smoking gun. The report released this week by Fox News that top defense officials briefed President Obama on a terror attack. They didn't brief him on a video, an anti-Muslim video. They didn't brief him on a spontaneous protest that went awry. They briefed him on an attack. The, uh, the guy who was at the time the head of AFRICOM, the Defense Department Combatant Combat Command with jurisdiction over Libya, told the House in classified testimony last year that he was the one who broke the news about the unfolding situation in Benghazi minutes after our consulate in Benghazi came under attack. This is classified testimony that has since been declassified. He testified that he told then Defense Secretary Leon Panetta and General Martin Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. This happened just before the two senior officials left the Pentagon to have a session with President Obama. It's a huge, huge story. Now, we'll see what the mainstream media does with it. I have an idea that there is one, uh, I have a feeling there is one particular U.S. senator who is pleased with the, the, evol the evolving transparency of this story, and that's United States Senator Lindsey Graham. Every time I talk to Senator Graham, we talk about Benghazi. And, and Senator Graham has sort of, has sort of led, carried the torch to make sure that, that, that stones are overturned and that people are accountable from Benghazi, uh, for Benghazi and what happened there. Let's welcome on our guest line, uh, U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham from the great state of South Carolina. Hey, Senator, Happy New Year. Great to have you with us on the Mike Gallagher Show. How are you? Uh, good, Mike. Happy New Year to you. And uh, 2014 could be a very revealing year when it comes to Benghazi. Well, and you've been saying this for a while now, and, and this Fox, I mean, this story, you read this and you see the timeline, and, and, and really it's what critics have been saying all along, that this administration flat out lied about what was behind Benghazi. This is a major story. The last time I talked to you in 2013, you said to me, listen, there's a, there's a lot to this story and more is coming out. Yeah, and let me tell you why I think I think what we need to be focusing on now is if uh, General Ham reported in real time up the chain there's a terrorist attack. Look at my questioning of Panetta and Dempsey a year ago. I'll get it to you uh, so you can you know listen to part of it. They said they knew it was a terrorist attack. They reported to the White House it was a terrorist attack. They met with the president about five o'clock. In a pre-scheduled meeting, not related to Benghazi, they informed him of what was breaking news at the time about Benghazi. Here's what's astonishing. The Secretary of Defense never talked to the president again for three days. Now, you've had an ambassador missing and killed in action. And the Secretary of Defense said that he briefed the president about the opening details, the initial uh, attack in a pre-scheduled meeting. And from then all the way for nine hours later, he never talked to the President of the United States again, never talked to him for a couple of days after. How can that be? How can isn't, that be? In, is, is, isn't that inconceivable? Uh, to me, how could the Commander-in-Chief never speak to his Secretary of Defense during the nine-hour attack? And when the ambassador was reported missing, did anyone tell the President, and what was his reaction? But you got before, during, and after. So I talked to my first survivor about a month ago or less, okay. a guy that was on the ground. He was at the consulate. He was the security officer, fine young man. He was temporary detail there, been there a couple of weeks. I said, did you see a protest? He said, no, sir, there was no protest. I looked on my video screen, and at a certain time, 16 to 20 heavily armed men came through the gate carrying a banner in Arabic. At the time, I didn't know what it said, but we now know it was the banner of Ansar al-Sharia, the right. al-Qaeda affiliate. Right. He said unequivocally there was never a protest. He never reported a protest. He said we're under attack. He and every other survivor were interviewed in Germany on the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th of September, and the FBI deputy director, who 
knows the case file, said that not one person reported a protest. So how could it be that Susan Rice is telling the entire world there's no evidence of a coordinated pre-planned terrorist attack? We believe this was a protest spawned by a video when not one person on the ground in Benghazi ever said that. How well, could that have happened? And not only Susan Rice, but but I have a little audio clip. President Obama himself. You're getting to my second point now. Keep going. Okay, good, good. He made an appearance on uh, a number of, of television programs, even including uh, the daytime talk show The View. And Joy Behar had a very pointed question for President Obama. Uh, and this is well after this has all been established, at least according to the timeline uh, revealed by the, this classified information from last year. I want you to hear this exchange between Joy Behar of The View and President Obama on, on, on ABC's talk show. Listen to this. It was reported that people just went crazy and wild because of this anti-Muslim movie or anti-Muhammad, I guess, movie. But then I heard uh, Hillary Clinton say that it was an act of terrorism. Is it? What do you say? Well, we're still doing an investigation. I mean, that was his go-to <laughs> response. Well, we're still investigating. Uh, uh, Senator Graham, he knew. He knew, did he not? It, it was impossible for him not to know that there was no protest because there was never any evidence of a protest reported from the people on the ground. So here he is he, given an opportunity to say that in front of millions of people on a daytime talk show on ABC, and he said, well, well, there's still an investigation. I think they manipulated the storyline of Benghazi for political reasons. The narrative was bin Laden's dead, the war in Iraq is over, we're withdrawing from Afghanistan, al-Qaeda is on the run. What's not to like about Obama's foreign policy? Then comes Benghazi on uh, 11 September, about six, seven weeks before the election. That would destroy that narrative if the truth came out. Susan Rice's story about a protest spawned by a hateful video is the least culpable explanation for the administration. If the truth had come out that this was a pre-planned, coordinated terrorist attack, long time in the making, and people on the ground could see it coming, and folks in Washington ignored their warnings, it's a completely different storyline weeks before the election. Here's the question. If on the 15th, the 16th, and 17th of September, the FBI interviewed every survivor and no protest was reported by those on the ground, how could our president for two weeks later, not just on that clip but other clips, still talk about a protest caused by video? And what happened at, at the White House on Saturday, on the 14th of September, they had a deputies meeting in the White House. And the storyline changed from a terrorist attack reported by General Lamb, reported by Secretary Panetta, reported by everybody on the ground, turned into a protest caused by video. Who was in that meeting? And if you find the person leading that meeting, you're finding the culprit here. Somebody on the 14th of September took all the intelligence and spun it to create a narrative about a protest caused by video that was a political decision, in my opinion, and Susan Rice sold it as hard as she could, and the president for two weeks also continued that storyline to deflect attention away from a terrorist attack right before the election. Senator Lindsey Graham is our guest here on the Mike Gallagher Show, and in my opinion, no one has been stronger on Benghazi than Senator Graham from the outset. Senator, I want to go back again to what Fox News released in, in, these, in these Benghazi transcripts. Again, the right. timeline involving President Obama himself, and this is so important yes. because it says here that the first person that General Carter Ham briefed about Benghazi was this uh, was was Dempsey. Um, and, and, and Ham told lawmakers in this now declassified testimony, he considered it a fortuitous happenstance that he was able to rope Dempsey and Leon Panetta into one meeting so that, as General Ham put it, they had the basic information as they headed across for their meeting at the White House. It, it was, because this was a pre-scheduled meeting not related to Benghazi. But you know where General Ham was at? He wasn't in Germany, the headquarters of AFRICOM. He, he was in the, the Pentagon. Pentagon. He was the I've talked yeah. to General Ham. Here's, here's the curious thing. If the Pentagon is reporting a terrorist attack, if the people on the ground are telling the State Department that it's a terrorist attack, if all the cables before the attack, months before, suggest al-Qaeda flags flying all over Benghazi, we can't defend this place from a coordinated terrorist attack, months before 
September the 11th, 2012. Yeah. How the hell did it become a protest spawned by video? And where did Susan Rice get this information? Who came up with that storyline on 14 September? And it goes back. Benghazi is about a strategic failure of foreign policy. How did Benghazi become a death trap? Why did all the requests for additional security, why were they denied? Because Obama did not want to go down the Bush road of fortifying consulates or embassies. He wanted to lead from behind and have a light footprint. It caught up with him in Benghazi. And after Benghazi, you've seen the whole Mideast fall apart. But where was Hillary Clinton? Where well, was that's what, that was, that was my, that, this was my next question, Senator Graham. Uh, Hillary, of course, is mentioned frequently as a likely presidential contender in 2016. If that's the case, where how, were you? Where were where, you, Hillary? Where was she? Yeah, what, you know, and what, you, what, you, know, and what, you don't know this, but you're about to hear it. On 25 August, there was a, an additional request for security, very uh, panicky. We can't defend this place. We need to ramp up security. Well, 25 August was just a couple of weeks before September the 11th. Uh, there is so much to yet to come. And right. do you know that the lease on uh, Villa B and C, where the attack took place, that it was renewed in July? For July of 2012? Do you know that? No, I, no, I found no. that out from talking about the survivor. The wow. Accountability Review Board said that they, the, the consulate was uh, planned to be closed in December. If that were true, why would you sign a lease in July for a to year. extend it for a year? And why would you sign a lease in July on a piece of property that had been attacked in June? On June the 10th, they had a terrorist attack against the consulate. They blew a hole in the wall where 40 people could go through. They renew the lease about a month later, and they don't wow. increase security. Who is in charge of renewing leases? Do they have any access to the information coming from Benghazi where people were pleading for additional security? And where was Hillary Clinton? Well, Senator, final question. In your view, it, will, will the truth ever be revealed about, about Benghazi? Will there be ultimate accountability for what happened in Benghazi, in your opinion? It depends on it, – yes, I think there will be. I think there's – I'm just not you're, – you're interested in finding out. I mean, look what Bush went through with Abu Ghraib and Gitmo and affairs in Iraq. It made us a better country when, when people manipulate storylines to affect political campaigns, particularly involving the death of four Americans, the first ambassador killed in over 30 years in the line of duty. Uh, I, I think – those are reasons enough to keep pressing. Yes, Mike, I do believe it will happen. I believe there are people out there that know stuff about Benghazi that are getting more emboldened. I promise you this. I want to be able to tell the families exactly what happened. I want right. to explain to the American people how could our president, two weeks after the attack, even suggest it wasn't a terrorist attack. Who right. changed the, the, the evidence? Who manipulated the, the intelligence to come up with a Susan Rice storyline? And where was Hillary Clinton before the attack, and what was she doing? We're grateful for your leadership on this very difficult and important issue. Senator Lindsey Graham, it's always good visiting with you. I'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks Thank for your you. time, Senator. I appreciate